Prime Minister. Ah, oh, Humphrey. Shall you? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Humphrey, what's a modernist in the Church of England? Ah, well, the word modernist is code for non-believer. <laughs> you mean an atheist? No, no, Prime Minister. An atheist clergyman couldn't continue to draw his stipend. So, when they stop believing in God, they call themselves modernists. <laughs> How could the Church of England suggest an atheist as Bishop of Bury St Edmunds? Well, very easily. The Church of England is primarily a social organisation, not a religious one. Is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's part of the rich social fabric of this country. So bishops need to be the sort of chaps who speak properly, know which knife and fork to use. <laughs> the sort of people one can look up to. So that's what Peter meant when he said that Canon Stanford's wife was eminently suitable. Of course. Cheers. Is there really no other possible candidate? Well, not really. There were a couple of better jobs available recently, you see. And what's better than a bishop? A rook. Oh. <laughs> Very droll. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the Dean of Windsor is a better job, or Westminster. Such preferment enables one to be on intimate terms with the royals. So being a bishop is just a matter of status. The question of dressing up in cassocks and gaiters. Yes, though gaiters are now only worn at significant religious events like the Royal Garden Party. <laughs> ah. Well, the church is trying to be more relevant. To God? No, of course not, Prime Minister. <laughs> I mean, relevant in sociological terms. So, the ideal candidate from the Church of England's point of view would be a cross between a, a socialite and a socialist. Precisely. <laughs> uh, just interrupt. Uh, mm. May I give you the career details of Canon Stanford? Yes, please do. Well, after theological college, he became chaplain to the Bishop of Sheffield. He moved on to be the diocesan advisor on ethnic communities and social responsibility. Mm. He also organised conferences on interfaith interface and interface between Christians and Marxists and between Christians and the women of Greenham Common. <laughs> Then he went on to be the university chaplain at the University of Essex, then vice principal of a theological college, and is now, as you know, secretary to the disarmament committee of the British Council of Churches. Has he ever been an ordinary vicar of a parish? Good <laughs> heavens, no, Prime Minister. <laughs> Clergymen who want to be bishops try to avoid pastoral work. So what you're saying is that Canon Stanford is a political troublemaker. Well, not exactly, but it could be a thorn in your side on several issues. Strikes? Public expenditure on welfare, inner cities, unemployment, defence. It's interesting, isn't it, that nowadays politicians want to talk about moral issues and bishops want to talk politics. <laughs> and he'd speak with the authority of a bishop and as a member of the Lords. He designed a new church in South London and on the plans were places for dispensing orange juice, family planning and organising demos. <laughs> but no place for Holy Communion. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, well, there was a dual-purpose hall in which you could hold a service. And the church approved this? Well, of course. You see, the church is run by theologians. How do you mean? Well, theology is a device for enabling agnostics to stay within the church. <laughs> I don't want Canon Stanford. What am I to do? Well, you could turn both candidates down, but that would be exceptional and not advised. Even though one of them wants to get God out of the Church of England and the other wants to get the Queen out? <laughs> The Queen is inseparable from the Church of England. Okay. What about God? <laughs> I think he's what's called an optional extra. 